Hey, what's up guys? It's Sunny here from Can't Wait Till Monday, and I haven't published a video in almost a month now, so I figured I should probably do one just to get back into the rhythm of things. And I thought I could just do a quick little fun one here. Um, so Figma, which if you haven't heard of it, it's basically like a UX or UI design tool that's actually really awesome. Uh, for me personally, it's basically replaced Photoshop just because it's so much faster and uh, it's a great way to design your website. Um, but anyways, Figma just released their plugin functionality yesterday, the beginning of August. Um, so I thought for this video, I would just play around with my favorite few and just kind of show you what they can do. So uh, yeah, here's their blog post that they released yesterday. Um, they feature some of their like more popular plugins. So I had a chance to look through all of them and I just picked out like the five or 10 that seemed most interesting to me. And I'm gonna show you basically what they can do in Figma. Um, okay, so what are some cool ones here? Actually, Themer is pretty cool. I'll show you this one first. Okay, so what Themer can do is basically if you set a style preset, like a color style, you can replace those colors within a different document. So for example, let's say I have these two rectangles here and I added this color style, the green and this little teal color. And the key is to name them the same thing as your other document. So here I just call them themer one and themer two. So then in the second document, I made a couple rec rectangles again and had a different color for them. And what you can do here is if I want to apply these styles to this document, I can just go here, uh, open this themer plugin, and then create a new theme. So let's call this themer style one, for example. We'll just take the color styles, and create that theme. So that should work. And the one thing here is you have to make sure your page is published, not just a draft in Figma. And then if we go over to this document, we can open up the, the plugin again. Here's the theme that we just created and we can apply it. Oh, sorry, <laughs> pick the color styles and we can apply it so that it actually replaces all of our colors, which is pretty cool. Um, what else do we have here? Uh, Time Machine is actually really cool too. So, one thing I would always do, well, okay, let me preface this by saying I don't consider myself a professional designer, but um, I like using Figma to sort of just work on my web design elements. Um, so one thing that's really cool is let's say you're working on a landing page like this, and then like obviously your initial version or your like halfway version does not look anything similar to the end version or your final version, but sometimes you want to keep that just to kind of see like an idea you were working on or just to see the progress. So for example, let's say this is our landing page at this point in time. We can right click plugins and click time machine. Uh, oh, we just need to select what we want time machine. So you can pick the full page or just the header or whatever you want. Um, so let's say, uh, Let's just do the header or the hero for now. So we can time machine this and that'll create this basically like a page essentially. And that creates our hero right here. So then if we go back into the main design and let's say, can I switch this around quick? No, I don't think so. Uh, let's say this image we want to put over here and then all the other stuff we want to put on the right side and then the image Make it smaller or something, put that like that. So let's say this is the second version of our hero. Well, we still have our time machine here. So if we ever want to put this back, we can just grab it um, and put it back in our design or, you know, just have it here as like a concept idea. So that's pretty cool. Really love time machine. What else do we have? Unsplash, super handy. So if you're just doing a mock-up and you want to throw a picture in, uh, so we can use one of these, for example. You can pick a shape or a picture and basically just right click, go to Unsplash, 
and you can pick a random image or you can have this preset. So if I pick business, it'll just insert a random business image or you can search for one. Um, if I search for something like desk, let's see if, okay, so we can put this picture in here. And how cool is that? There's like, how fast was that just to get a photo from Unsplash and put it in one of our shapes? And we can do the same thing here super quick. Uh, I don't know, like that. Bam. That's amazing. <laughs> um, similar. Okay, this one's pretty cool too. So let's say you're working in a document like this. Um, and ideally, you should have your typography styles designed or uh, defined beforehand. But let's say you don't, you're working on a landing page really quickly and you want to change all of this text to be a different font family or uh, size, or you actually want to define a style for it. So what you can do is click on one of the instances. Oops, get out of here. And then go to similar and you can pick how you want it to find other similar uh, layers. <laughs> so in this case, since we want it to change the text, we can just pick the font family um, and the font size to make sure we grab other elements like this. And then click select layers. And as you can see, that probably picked that, 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 and that. And from here, we can easily you know, change it to like, I don't know, let's do a serif font. Laura and bam, look how quick that was. It changed our font. Um, okay, what else do we got? Unsplash, Time Machine, Theme or something like Patty. Patty's pretty cool as well. It took me a second to figure out what this does. Um, but basically you can emulate padding like you would when you're doing web design, but through a grid. So for example, let's say this was um, let's say this is our hero and we don't want objects coming too close to the edge, like we have a defined padding. So what we could do here is, I'm assuming I'm using this properly, but uh, if you put in, let's say a rectangle, and we can make it a bit smaller like that, and then let's actually even this out a bit. So let's say this white area we want as our padding area. So what we would do is click on the frame, go to plugins, open up Patty, and then basically it will, is that good? Did that get that? Um, let me just make sure that got that frame. Okay, it should have. Um, so basically what this will do is create a layout based on what it sees, like what elements are closest to, to the edge of the frame. So if we take this rectangle away, uh, oh, there we go. So I just had to enable the grids, but as you can see, it made this grid here and you can see it made it here as well. So now we have this, uh, these outlines sort of defining what our padding is. And now when we place elements, we can snap it to the padding or just make sure we don't go over. Um, fig motion. So this is pretty interesting too. I need to figure out what the best way to use this is. Um, but let's select a frame. Okay, so we'll pick this frame. Cool, cool. And then let's say we want this rectangle. Um, okay, what do we do here? <laughs> okay, so we can kind of animate it. So let's say we want I don't know, maybe just to move it to the edge. So we can, uh, okay. I don't know, it looks like it actually froze on me a little bit. Okay, there we go. So we have our green rectangle and we want to move it to the edge in an animation. So we can insert a keyframe for our X axis. And then let's say the animation takes just over half a second and we will move it over to the edge, insert another keyframe. And then we can also, uh, what would be fun here? 
we, I guess we can make it disappear too. Um, so the opacity, let's move this back to the beginning. So now it's 100% here, and then when we go out to this keyframe, um, we can insert, or sorry, this time we can insert another keyframe and here have it uh, lower the opacity to zero. So let's see if this works here. Okay, that didn't work for some reason, um, but you can see that it still moved to the left, which is pretty cool. Um, so you can export that animation as CSS or as JSON or JSON or however you pronounce it. Um, you can also render it, which I don't know. <laughs> so if you click render, uh, okay, this will just take a second. I don't know why they host it on their server. I feel like that probably takes up a lot of resources, but you can actually get a video of your animation, which is pretty freaking cool. Um, yeah, so you can probably do a lot more advanced animation stuff with that. Um, and I think there might just be another plugin. Uh, some of these content ones, I guess, are pretty cool. So let's say with this one, um, what do I want to change here? I don't know. Okay, like, so this doesn't work yet. But let's say you click on one of these, like let's say you just have the shape defined here. You would right click, go to, was it Content Buddy? No, not Content Buddy, the other one, Content Reel. You'd go to Content Reel and then you could actually just insert an avatar, which is pretty cool. Um, but what is available right now are some icons and text as well. So like let's say you wanted to change, uh, can we change this? No, I don't think so, but okay. Uh, let's say we add some text and we want someone's name here. I guess you would just click this and you could insert a first name. So that's pretty quick rather than, you know, just making up names on the fly. Anyways, those, that's a quick look at my few favorite plugins that I played around with last night at about two or 3 a.m. Um, and those should just give you an idea as to what's possible with the new Figma plugin system. Uh, so I have to say it's pretty cool and I can see, like, a, like this is day one, like especially a year from now or even just a few, few months from now, I can see how this will drastically increase uh, some workflow speeds. So anyways, I hope you found this video helpful or entertaining or whatever this was, probably none of the above, and I hope you have a good rest of your day.